Hi, my name is Noam Brezis and welcome to this masterclass. We're going to talk about the top four business KPIs that should be tackled by using AI and predictive analytics. So a little bit about myself, actually I became 40 this year, meaning that I'm not going to be in the Forbes 40 under 40, but I have three kids, very cute, three kids under six. So at least I have that. I love data. I worked as a consultant about how to build uh, infrastructure, query optimization, working with data, and actually having insights from data for a long time. And then I went to the academia, did a PhD in computational neuroscience, and actually that's where I met Zohar, my partner, and together we built Pekin. A little bit about, you know, trends in AI, and it's amazing, and maybe, you know, thinking about AI, the technology is crazy, and we can do so much these days. But 75% of these models of AI and ML models and projects actually fail. And that's a big, big issue because there are so many resources that we put in these models and at the end of the day, we're even not using them. And it's a big question why. And we need to understand that before we even talk about the KPIs because it's going to help us to also understand what are the KPIs in our business that we need to understand which we're going to tackle. So what are the reasons that this high failure rate. And so we can divide it into two main areas. One is the technical and business reasons. So in the technical side, definitely number one, data. Data availability, it's also the quality of the data. You know, everybody's talking about it. It's, there's you know, this trend today about AI data centric, understanding that actually you can't do AI if you don't have data. Now. This is, of course, you know, there, there's a lot to do there. And, and I think organizations understand that actually they need to have this prepared before even they start modeling. Now, second reason is really slow time to market. It takes so much time today to have a model ready. And it's, of course, so a lot about data prep. Also having what we call feature engineering, feature selection, and, and it's a cycle. So, Data scientists are going to build the model, but it's not that you can use it. You're going to go back, do more feature engineering until you're happy with the results that you have. And at the end of the day, you're going to have that model in production. So it's really difficult cycle to do. And on the business side, which, you know, when there's a combination of technical and business problems, it's really hard to have these models really efficient. So, for example, I think the main number one reason for, for data science projects to fail is just this disconnect between data science and the business. So business has, you know, KPIs, they have very clear goals, but data scientists, they have a little bit of a different perspective. If you, like in the academia, it's very common to talk about SOTA, state of the art. It's like taking these models to the best performance you can, but it's not gonna be related to what business needs. So actually it's not what we're looking for. And this disconnect is really causing a lot of problems and data scientists are actually having models ready, but it's not what the business is looking for. So that's number one, actionability is very important. So you have a model, but then you know, it's like, if you, if you know what's gonna happen in the future, that's amazing, but if you can't act on that and you can't change, actually, it doesn't help. And that's the whole point. We're gonna use these models to change and to actually improve our business. So it's really important to have a model that actually we can use and which is actionable. And of course, short of resources, really hard to find good data scientists that can have our models uh, built. Let's talk about the analytics landscape. So of course, you know, talking about being data driven, we need our business to understand really where it is at a current state using the data that we have. Now, first step is descriptive analytics. It's actually understanding what happened using the data. So we're going to have business analysts, data analysts taking the data, grouping it in different groups and understanding what's happening for each of our customer groups. And that's going to help us understand our business. Now, this is what we call classical BI, business intelligence. But the problem is that we know what happened, 
but it doesn't help us to change because we want to understand the future where our business is going in order to do our actions and decisions. So that's what we call predictive analytics. It's not understanding the past, but actually projecting and having what's going to happen in the future. And you can do this manually. This is, you know, it's done even today, of course, by business and data analysts manually, but the power of machine learning AI is exactly in that place. It's to actually take all the data and instead of understanding what happened, now we're gonna understand and predict what is gonna happen with our business. And what's amazing with ML is that actually it's gonna be at the user level or customer level. So it's not just having these groups with a high level, but actually now you can really have a great granularity about your data and understand what's gonna happen with each and every one of them. So that's predictive analytics. But like we said earlier, it's not enough. You want to understand also what action you can do it needs to be actionable what you can do in order to change the future, right? It's not only about knowing what's gonna happen, but you wanna change and take your business to a better place. And that's prescriptive analytics. Actually, what we're doing is instead of being reactive, we become proactive. How is that happening? So we have various steps that we need to go through in order to have ML models. Of course, we said first is to have our data. We're gonna take data from data warehouse, from data lakes, combine it into one location, and then we're gonna to start to, of course, clean the data, have encoding, cleansing, imputation, which is the art of taking missing values and understanding how we're gonna actually replace them to a real value. Feature engineering, which is having our data and making sense of our data for the ML model to really understand the patterns. And feature selection, which is about understanding what are the features that are the most important for the prediction itself. So once we have all this data part, of course, then we go to the modeling algorithms out there. This is, of course, you know, very famous, talking deep learning, one of the most famous models these days, where we're gonna take data and really have uh, these models understand what's the pattern at the user level or the customer level. And once we have our model ready, we're gonna take, analyze, of course, the results and have insights, understand really how the model's working, and then we can deploy it into production and to start using it on a daily basis. So we talked about how to build the machine learning model, but now let's talk about what we need on the business side, because remember, we said it's so important to have this alignment between the two. So let's understand how we're going to define the business question that we can really see how ML is going to help us with that question. So let's look at the different steps that we have on our customer journey. First step is customer acquisition. So we have a bunch of leads, which we need to understand out of this large database, which are the leads that we want to contact first? Because we can't contact all of them, right? It's a large list. We really need to understand which have the highest probability to convert and become customers. So that's where we're gonna use model of lead scoring. Understand for each of our leads, and remember, that's the power of ML. We can see this at the item level, at the user level, at the customer level. So for each lead, we're gonna understand what's the probability for them to convert and become a customer. So that's very powerful for user and customer acquisition. Next step is about monetization. So once we have our customers, we really want to get the most out of them. And this is where we have upsell, cross-sell models. So we can understand out of the products that we have, which actually are the best suitable for each of our customers. And now we know exactly what offer we can give for our customers in order to have this upsell and cross-sell. And this is crucial for monetization. And we see, by the way, crazy increase in revenue using these models. We're gonna talk about this just later. And final step is really about having our customers stay. I'm sure churn is something that you heard if you're on the business side, I'm sure that churn is definitely one, and you know, in companies, this is one of the biggest problems that customers have, is really that they're not gonna stay. And we need to understand how we're gonna tackle churn. So having a churn model is very powerful. And the main reason is now that ML is gonna tell us 
actually, and what this is what's called AI explainability, we're going to understand what is the cause for our customers to leave. And now we can really act, and based on that, we can have and reduce our churn rate. So that's the customer journey steps. Let's talk about operational efficiency. This is critical for CPG and retail businesses, where, of course, we have you know, so many products that we're selling, but it's crucial to understand how much demand we have for each of these products. And so if we understand how much demand we have for each of our products, we can, of course, improve and enhance our operational efficiency. We talked about the customer journey and the various business questions. Let's drill down and better understand each of these business questions and how much impact we can see out of them. Let's start with upsell and cross-sell. So who is it for? Of course, retail, direct sales campaigns, marketing campaigns, and many more. For retail, we can see an increase in sales rep productivity using these sorts of models. In direct sales campaigns, we're going to talk about optimizing conversion. And in marketing, of course, improve ROI. So the business objective of upsell and cross-sell is really to increase the sales by targeting the customers who are the most likely to do an additional purchase. But let's talk about impact. Remember, we said it's so important to have this alignment, and it's not about building the model, it's about the impact. And what we see with the customers is that using upsell and cross-sell, we can see five to ten times improvement in conversion rate, and an improvement of one to five percent in revenues. So this is insane, and this is exactly what we're talking about having this alignment between business and ML, where we can use these models to improve our business. We talked about upsell and cross-sell. Let's talk about another very popular use case, churn. So every business would like to decrease their churn rate. But the big problem in question is how do you do it? It's not easy. And it actually starts from understanding why customers are leaving. And to do that, ML can be really helpful. We're going to build the model, but this time it's not only about the prediction, who's going to churn, but it's also about why. What are the most important variables and the most important features of these customers that because of that, actually they're going to churn. And now we can actually have a different action based on the reason. And this is where it becomes really powerful. By the way, we have customers, and this is amazing, which see actually a reduce of 55% in churn. And this is insane, but it's really by aligning the action with the reason. And we remember, we talked about this alignment between business and ML, and it's crucial to have both of them aligned on the same question. The third use case we wanna talk about is LTV, lifetime value. Let's go back to the user and customer journey. Remember, we're talking about acquisition, customer acquisition. That's where these sort of models are very powerful. We actually predict, and this time it's not a binary question, but rather we predict for each of our customers how much value they're gonna to give to our business. The main industries that can see impact from LTV is mobile, gaming, for sure. They can really use this model. We're going to talk in a second how to use LTV models, but also e-commerce, DTC, really understanding what's the value that we have for each of our users and customers is extremely important for these sorts of industries. The fourth use case we want to talk about is demand forecasting. It's crucial for businesses like CPG Retail where they have physical products. Now in physical products, you want on the one hand to prevent stockouts and on the other hand, prevent overstock. You actually want to be very precise on what's the demand for each of your products. Now, how are we gonna use such a model? We can actually use it in many stages in the process, manufacturing, supply chain, inventory control, where every change in the precision of the model or accuracy is critical to really have an impact and to improve and optimize each of these stages. To conclude, we saw how much impact AI and ML can have on your business, but it's critical to have this alignment between the business question 
and the model that we're building. So I want to say thank you very much for listening to this presentation. And of course, I'll be happy if you want to contact. If you have any questions, just drop me a line. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.